come, come and come and rest for a bit. Yeah, heard that. Well, I'm really glad you're here this morning, and I have. Uh, I didn't bring. I didn't bring my story box this morning, but I hope that's okay. Good. <laughs> but uh, but I brought a really. What, what I think is a really great story. And it's a really great story for what we're going to be um, doing later today in front of worship. And this is called A Handful of Seeds. Have you ever seen this story before? You're going to, you're going to do the seeds with me, that's right. Yeah, that's one of the surprises. <laughs> I know you will. So let's, let's hear this story. Concepcion lived with her grandmother in a little house on a hill. Together they cleared the stone to make a vegetable garden. They planted corn and beans and chilies. There's their garden. Remember to save enough seed for next year. Oh, oh thanks. Remember to save enough seed for next year, for the next planting, grandmother said to Concepcion. Then you will always, always have something to eat. Every day, Concepcion walked to the stream to get water and walked back with the heavy cans hanging from her shoulders. You've been watering a garden at the church, haven't you? But probably not with big, heavy pails of water. <laughs> Carefully, she poured the precious water around the corn. Weeks passed. The sun shone. Later, the rain came and the corn grew tall. The beans wound around their stalks to reach the sun, and the chili bushes flowered. When the corn and the beans and the chilies were ripe, grandmother gave some to the man who owned the land, saved some to eat, and sold the rest to the neighbor who took it to sell in the city far away. He brought back fresh buns and rice for them to eat. All that out of the garden they grew. One sad day, grandmother died. You cannot stay here, said the man who owned the land. I have a family ready to move in. But I will work for you, said Concepcion. This family can work harder and grow more corn and beans, he said. So she had to leave the little house with its painted walls and clean mud floor. Isn't that sad? She had to leave. She had nowhere to go. Come and live with us, the neighbor's wife said. But Concepcion knew she already had seven children to feed. I will go there, she said, and she pointed to the valley where the city lay. It's a long walk for such little legs, the neighbor's wife shook her head. My legs are strong from carrying water, Concepcion said goodbye, hugged the neighbor's wife and all of the children, all seven of them. God go with you, they all said. Concepcion bundled up the corn, beans, and chilies that grandmother had saved and set off with her cart down the stony path into the valley. It was a very long walk, and Concepcion's bare feet were tired and sore by the time she reached the barrio, the barrio on the edge of the city. She saw hundreds of huts made of tin and plastic and cardboard crowded close together, each leaning towards the next. Is this the city? Concepcion wondered in dismay. I thought it would be beautiful. See all the rickety shacks? She walked along the narrow muddy path, stumbling with tiredness until she bumped into a gang of children. Look where you're going, can't you? I ask your pardon, Concepcion said politely. Their clothes were torn and their faces were dirty and their hair tangled. But when she smiled at them, they smiled back. My name is Tomas. Where are you from? Concepcion pointed to the far hills. But my grandmother is dead. Stay with us. We will teach you how to pick garbage and sell it. And how to take food from the merchant stalls without being seen. 
That is stealing, said Concepcion, surprised. Thomas shrugged. It's better than starving. I have corn and beans and chilies. That's not enough for one good meal, said Tomas. When they grow, there will be enough. You will see. You're crazy. They'll never grow here. But you can stay with us. See, they're living on the garbage dump. Because they had nowhere else to live. So Concepcion lived with the children on the edge of the dump. She dug the hard ground with the broken handle of a kettle. She made a tiny wall of stones and she planted some of her corn and her beans and her chilies. See, she's making a little garden. Every day she watered them and watched them grow until they came up green and bright. The beans and the chili bushes flowered, the prettiest sight in the whole burial. Concepcion was sure that her dear grandmother was watching over their little garden. See how things were growing? <coughs> but one day, Tomas and the others came running around the edge of the dump with the police chasing after them. The police yelled and hit her friends with their sticks. The children cried and screamed. Concepcion hid among the garbage. Why did I come to the city, she asked herself. When everything was, is, was quiet, she peeked out like a frightened mouse. The children were covered with bruises, and the garden was trampled flat. Why are all these children Well, because they had done something that the police didn't like. Why are you crying, Tomas asked. The police didn't beat you. My garden is spoiled. If the corn and beans and chilies had ripened, we would have food to eat and sell, and you wouldn't have to steal. No use crying. It's all finished now. Concepcion dried her eyes. I have some seeds left. Thomas licked his cut lip and nodded. This time we will all help you plant your corn and beans and chilies. With everyone's help, they dug a big plot and planted the rest of grandmother's seeds. They took it in turns to water them and guard them. Soon the corn grew high, and the bean pods were fat and firm, and the chilies were green and shiny. We'll have a feast, said Tomas, and take the rest into the city to sell. But we must always save enough seeds to plant, Concepcion reminded them. They cooked the corn and beans and chilies. The delicious smell of food, food soon filled the air. As they began to eat, another hungry gang of children appeared. Concepcion and Tomas and the others shared their meal with them. But our garden cannot feed all the children in the burial, Concepcion said sadly. Suddenly she had an idea. She took some of the seeds she had saved and gave them to the leader of the other gang. She told him how to make a garden, how to plant and water the seeds. Always save enough seeds for another planting and to share with other children, she told him. As grandmother had told her, he promised he would do that. Concepcion was sure that grandmother was smiling down on her from the sky and that her eyes were no longer misty with age, but as bright as the stars that shone in the burial. That's the story. Well, yeah, it's kind of sad, isn't it? But don't you think it was neat that this little girl knew enough to keep some seeds, always keep some seeds so that they would have something to eat? That's good. Well, we're going to sing a song about seeds, and um, uh, I think there's a real, something really special going to happen with for you. Um, uh, and I'm not sure where you're going, but I think you're going for a bit of a walk. You're going to the beach. So we'll see you back in a little while for communion. And we're going to sing, In the Bulb, There is a Flower. Yeah.